Welcome everyone. This is uh, Sherry McGriff, author of The Awakening of a Seer and Stolen Generation. And today I have a fantastic interview for you by author Gina Guy Warren. Uh, welcome, Gina. Thank you, Sherry. Thank you for having me. Um, I'm happy to have you here. Um, okay, so first, let me just show you her book. And for those listening, you want to see this book. Uh, is a fantastic cover. It's absolutely beautiful. So the name of her book is The Word and the Workout, Prophetic Insight into Physical, Emotional, and Spiritual Fitness, The Way of a Warrior. Uh, beautiful. So let me tell you a little bit about uh, Gina first. Gina Guy Warren has served in full-time ministry for more than 25 years. Well, you don't look old enough to do that. <laughs> is there an odd applause button somewhere? <laughs> I don't have a... And is the founder of Truth in Love Ministry International. She is an international conference speaker and has led crusades throughout Africa and is a radio talk show personality with KCWG Radio, Speaking Truth in Love. She founded The Word and the Workout, a unique fitness ministry that combines physical fitness with focused discipline. Together, she and her husband, Brian, Mr. Unbreakable, Warren, have three daughters. <laughs> so welcome, Gina. Thank you, Sherry. Thank you. All right. So, uh, Gina, tell us a little bit about your book. Oh, my. Okay. Well, you know, the book is uh, written in a 30-day devotional format. Uh, originally, when the Holy Spirit spoke to me about this whole concept, it was 90 days. And uh, as I was finished, you know, getting through the writing, just one day he spoke to me, Sherry, he said, you're done. You're, you're not, you're done. He said, you're ready. 30 days. And I went, wait a minute. So I understood that this was going to be book one of three. So this is a 30 day devotional and I call it kind of like a French cuisine. You know, when you're eating rich food, the last thing you want to do is an all day buffet and just eat a whole bunch of food. Or you'll get sick. Mm -hmm. Same concept with this word, this book that I've written. Uh, yeah, I believe it's pretty meaty, a lot of prophetic insight. Um, and so it's, I wrote it in, a, in a, a way that the format that the reader would be able in one sitting, just every morning, get their devotion in, get a real good meal in, and then time to digest it. Right. I, I, yeah. I agree with that. Uh, it's very meaty. Very meaty. Um, let me uh, let me show or talk about something that I uh, I really love. Okay. So the book has, you know, she said 30 days, right? So I'll show you one. Uh, this is day 10. Finally out how to beat addiction. And then at the end of each chapter, there is a call to action page. And either you can answer the questions on the bottom of the page, or you can use her tactical journal, which is a companion book, which, uh, what, what does that have in there? Um, Actually, well, you know, it was, well, you know, interestingly, I heard another uh, word from the Lord and he said, you know, many have been highly misunderstood um, and they've been misplaced. So I dedicated this, this journal to the misunderstood, the rejected, and, you know, Sherry, many that have been told your voice doesn't matter and there's nowhere for you to speak. There's no platform for you. And many of us stopped writing. I don't know about you, but when, you know, I've gone through some of the, the hell and high water that I know a lot of our listeners have gone through. Uh, some of us have a tendency to not write because it makes it real <laughs> and we just avoid writing. And that, that's my personal story. So I wanted to, uh, you know, uh, dedicate this to those that were told their voice didn't matter. And so I heard the Lord say, you know, God is listening, start speaking. So what I did was just at the top of every devotion, uh, I just put a, um, wow, a word of wisdom. And so one of the word of wisdoms would be unforgiveness is a terroristic threat to the heart. Mm. That's a lot to think about. So then you have the lines in which you can start, you know, writing your thoughts because God's listening. So yes, it definitely can go with this book, but it also can just be um, a journal for anything else that you want to do. And tactical means to, you know, carefully military term to carefully plan out your actions so that you have an expected end. So a lot of us are desiring an end in our lives, but we really don't have a plan. <laughs> you know, so how are we to get to an end without making a plan? So the tactical journal was an aid to that. Yeah, I love that. 
Thank you. Um, let me uh, give some examples of what's in the book. So day 10, uh, finally out, How to Beat Addiction. And you give your story of how you were addicted to drugs as a, a teenager, a late teenager, and uh, God saved your life, yes. literally, um, yes. several times until you finally decided to stop yes. doing that, right? Yes. And, uh, and, you know, and why I mention that is this book is full of relevant examples, relevant things that have happened to you and other people that people in the church deal with. Mm -hmm. Rather themselves or their family, their kids, their spouses, parents, um, you know, and um, I like on page 58 in this book. So you're talking about drinking and drugs and prescription uh, medication. And that's a very relevant and timely um, conversation. Today we have CBD oil coming out and it's in absolutely everything. And a lot of the church is, excited to finally get to use pot let's let's yes. use, let's yes. be real and even though they say the thc isn't really um strong enough to affect anyone um why would it be put in a put in a formula of anything if it's not effective so something is in there but you know if you're very ill maybe uh god's going to going to use that but everyone else are you ill that god's yeah. telling you to do that you, anyway you got to pray about everything right but um, one of the things you say in here is um, the focus shouldn't be whether you are sinning if you choose to drink or take prescriptions, but rather will the choices you're making impair your judgment? Right there, that's a whole teaching just to uh -huh. your kids, right? Yes. yes. Um, will your discernment still be on point when you're under the influence of these sedatives, which means tending to calm, moderate, or tra tranquilize nervousness? Yes. Um, yeah. Another thing you say, we must ask ourselves first if our decisions will impair our discernment. If the answer is yes, are we willing to allow that sedation or sedation for an hour, a few days, or even 10 years? This is not a salvation issue, but Come an on. individual's choice to be or not to be on point. And, you know, it goes further. Yes. I love that you, um, if I may say, I love <laughs> that you pulled that chunk out because that is really the um, essence of who I am. So many will ask, you know, how do you hear the Lord? How did you get to where you're at? How this, how did this happen? And that what you, I love that you pulled that out, Sherry, because that really is the diving board or the foundation of who Gina really is. I learned to ask whatever I was doing, will this impair me? Wait, will I be able to hear from you? will it in any way cause me to stumble or something? And so I ask those questions and am I supposed to feel this? Am I not supposed to feel this? Uh, are you giving me permission to um, ease the pain for a, for a season, a day, a week? What, what are you doing Lord? And so that, it, that foundational uh, uh, segment uh, I think would answer a lot of questions and that's why it can't be a religious issue. People need to ask the Lord themselves. What are you doing? So doesn't the Lord know tomorrow what's going to take place or an emergency in an hour with your children? So I chose to not drink um, as a mother because what if I happen to be drunk and there, my children had an emergency? So, yeah. Uh, well, actually, one of my daughters um, last year, um, she said, <laughs> and this is one of the best compliments I've gotten um, she said, thank you for not being one of those wine moms. Wow. And wow. I was like, oh. Wow. That's and then I, you know, proceeded to kind of ask, well, you're welcome, but why? And it's because wine moms are kind of out of it. And if something like an emergency happens, they're not available to take care of their kids. Or if their kids are young, they're not available or they're not quite there. They're not on point. Um, and, you know, you know, people make bad decisions when they're um, drinking. Correct. Um, so that's just a little snippet <laughs> from chapter 10. It. And let's see. Um, and I'll have you share something too in a minute. Let's see. Uh, day 13, I love this. Uh, being a part of the charismatic church and okay. also being raised Pentecostal. Um, 
the day 13 is under the influence seduced by a word. So if you're in the uh, charismatic movement or Pentecostal or um, anything uh, like that, you know about prophetic words and how sometimes yes. it's from the flesh and sometimes, you know, if you know the character, uh, or maybe you don't know, the character you find out later, the character of a prophet or someone giving a word, they ha end up having a bad character, then they're influenced by something other than the Lord. And so you go into the uh, story about, uh, in First Kings 13, on page 76, about King Jeroboam and the young prophet who came to give him a word, and then an older prophet. Uh, so the young prophet... Just give background. Um, the young prophet had a word from the Lord, had strict instructions to not go back. And then the older prophet, who was under the influence of something, told him, well, I'm a prophet. I have a word, and you're definitely supposed to go back. And then that young prophet was killed. Right? Mm -hmm. So um, why don't you talk about that and what that means for us today? I mean, just when you said that he was killed, you have to understand, as I declare in, in the first chapter of the book about somebody call a doctor, you know, Jeremiah is so perplexed um, because the people are getting worse. So when you say they were killed, I moved to tears. I'm choking back, not tearing up right now so that I can do this interview. That's how much I feel the pain of what we are discussing right now. So, uh, yeah, I, 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 I declare in this age that we're coming in in 2020 and what's about to, to take place, White House, Courthouse, Church House, uh, God's Cleaning All Houses is what I've been prophesying for a couple years now, is, uh, you know, people are very concerned that it's money that's going to lead people astray, the love of it, uh, the sedu seduction of the money, uh, the seduction of a $10,000 honorarium to preach a word. But I beg to call, I beg to differ uh, with that. I really believe what's happening now is uh, believers, believers are being seduced by a word. They're not necessarily just, uh, they're not necessarily being seduced by, um, uh, you know, their popularity. It's a word. So uh, I've, I've seen people, you know, come to this ministry, other ministries, and I have so much wisdom I'll be sharing, especially in counseling sessions. Do you know the first thing people will say is, well, are you seeing anything for me? Do you have a word for me? And so they're so hungry to get a word instead of being counseled in some wisdom and, and instruction. And when you're that hungry for a word, you can be seduced by it. Uh, and like you said, the soul of the person that's giving that word. Now we're all, nobody's perfect. Right. We're all dealing with character. We're all, that is not what I'm saying. I am not perfect. However, when I teach in that chapter, what you're explaining in chapter 13 is I teach how to actually identify uh, the, the seducer, the, the, the prophet that's going to give the word. Um, if they're actually seducing you, what's the first sign of that? So it's not like, oh, is his character rotten? Is he, a, is he a, no, the first thing is listen to what they say to you. And this prophet says, listen, I just had a massive, um, uh, you know, victory and taking over, you know, the, the prophets of Baal, this was a great thing. And the Lord told me to stay right here and rest. And he said, don't go back the way you came. So the prophets told that. But what happens to the seduction of the word? How do we know that this is the ministry, the prophet? Uh, that I should listen to or I should not. Well, the first thing the prophet says is, I too am a prophet. Number one, that shows me this person's got an identity crisis. So, and that's the problem is when people don't, they have to identify themselves with each other. It means they don't really know who they are. Does that make sense? So he had to tell him, I too am a prophet. Well, the Bible also says the subject of the prophets or subject, the spirit of the prophet is what? subject to so you don't have to come to me sherry and say oh hi gina guy warren i'm a woman too that tells me you're not really you got a little gender confusion going on you're not sure that you really are one see what i'm saying so we don't have to identify ourselves that so in the company of the prophets when you're in the company of real prophets and real seers you don't have to identify yourself so then secondly he gives him a contrary word to what the lord had already spoken to him so we've got two signs. So that's, you know, I'm not going to preach the whole thing, but uh, in getting this book, that's what I think that they're, they, I, I am attempting to teach the body of Christ the red flags to understanding um, how you can actually be, be seduced by word. And ultimately, the new prophet dies. 
he literally, he doesn't even get to see his destiny. Right. Oh God, what could that guy have done for, for the kingdom of God when Trump takes office in 2020 and takes everybody out with, how did he do it again? There's going to be mass mayhem and mass lawlessness. If we don't have true seers and prophets teaching people correctly, um, we're in trouble. And it's already happening now. So that's why this book is vital for, for our listeners right now. Yeah, I, I have seen it. It's heavy, huh? I know. Yeah, it is. It's like, oh. Yeah, I see it on your face. I can imagine the listeners are just going to be. <laughs> yeah, but exact why I wrote it in 30-day 30, 30 increments so that they could just stop and think, what did she just say? And uh, we're going to be able to identify the hirelings and the false prophets and those that are prophesying from their souls. Because not everybody's wicked. Some right. are just weak. Some are just weak. And uh, we don't want to be taken into the weakness uh, of, uh, you know, apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, and evangelists. Um, we want you to be very careful. So if we know what God's, if, we, if we've got the healing in our own souls and we identify the red flags, that'll keep us from, right. you know, ultimately premature death of our own destinies or right. our lives. And we have to know what God has said to us. Yes. first so that when someone else speaks into our life it resonates if it's true or if it doesn't resonate maybe it's a later thing so yes. you kind of like oh okay thank you i'll i'll hold on to that and we'll we'll see what god's doing mm. or you know immediately mm, that doesn't sound right that doesn't fit with what god told me or what i feel that he's saying i'm going going to do or should do and so you have to know his voice yourself and so this book will help with that and then the the um questions at the end will help you identify with all the chapters um, where there are some issues and what to do about it how to pray about it how to get delivered from it and, and things like that is there anything else you would like to share from your book that you have for the readers? Did God give you anything for the people listening or watching today? Yeah. You know, that's a good question. Uh, yes. You know, uh, why I really, why I wrote the book. Um, I always say if you're my friend or my family, you're my preach. And I don't mean that. And well, depending upon how somebody's going to receive that, uh, they may be like, Oh my gosh, that's great. She's going to teach on what, but if you're like, oh, Lord, that means something was wrong and there's some forgiveness and reconciliation that needs to take place. And the body of Christ is so good at taking each other out. We don't need Satan. We do not need evil. <laughs> We're doing it all on our own. We, we are taking each other's out, taking each other out. And so I want to go after the POWs, the prisoners of war that have been lost and hurt by religion and life's trials. So in the first chapter, again, as I, um, as I referred back earlier in the interview, interview, is that Jeremiah uh, was so perplexed because there were many pastors and prophets in his time, and yet the people were getting sicker and sicker. And I, t I discuss in that chapter what, I guess, you know, what validates me speaking this way? Is it just things I prayed about? Um, is it things I've just read about in the Bible? Yes and yes, but it's also experience. So in the first chapter, I talk about a very well-known pastor, uh, and I use the name. Uh, a lot of names are changed in the book and times and such, uh, so none of you them can sue me. Um, so there's wisdom in that. Uh, so I change some gender <laughs> and some times. Uh, however, I teach from the stories that I've been through. But I just, just distinctly talk about a pastor, uh, a very Miko, that came into my life. And uh, I, always, I like to tell our listeners, listen, if you look at your past, you'll understand where your future is going. The very weapons that were forged against you will be the very areas that God's going to give you the weapons of warfare and victory for your future. So mm -hmm. unless you've been molested, you may not have the authority and the victory uh, and the anointing to break that off of other people if you've not been through it yourself. Uh, so I talk about dealing with leaders and I've dealt with so many leaders and they've come to me and this one in particular, uh, was in the middle of production of his second movie. Uh, he was very well known. Uh, he was a multimillionaire very early uh, in the early 80s, the Z carpet cleaning business. Make the long story short, he was working with the mafia. He was taking people's money. He ends up in prison. Well, Sherry, he found Jesus in prison. And when he found Jesus, 
he came out and guess what he did? He started a church. And when he started the church, he also started Fraud Discovery Institute. And so out of his church in San Diego, he also had a business. And he sat in his office and he split the time with the sheep and he ran his fraud discovery business. So he worked with short selling. Uh, he worked with uh, white collar criminals and exposing because he was a white collar criminal. Right. However, Satan still had his hook in him. So in the process, while he was, it was uh, exposing fraud, he was a fraud himself. So he was taking out his entire church, stealing their money, taking money off credit cards, getting breast implants for his secretary. Uh, I could go on. So these, so this, uh, I found the situation come to my home as a single mom. I was a single mom at this time. I was in my home in Riverside. Of course, they all came to me. I had the 4,000 square foot house. I appeared to have all this money and I appeared to, right? So these people are going to try to attach to what they want. So he thought I had what he needed, but what he didn't know is I had exactly what he needed. I had the Holy Ghost. Okay, I may not, I appeared to have the money, appeared to have the BMW, appeared to have it all. And yet he sat at my table and I had to facilitate a Ponzi scheme of one of our partners that came to me. So I didn't know who Barry Minko was sitting in my home. And uh, after that meeting, I found $1,000 crumbled up in my bathroom. Not a check written from a ministry, but $100 bills and a treasure chest, because I'm very prophetic, my home detail, detail, and a treasure chest for all of our guests where they could get a toothbrush and blah, blah, blah. And inside of that were crumbled up $100 bills. He was trying to pay me off because, okay. because I ended up prophesying over him that the Lord is going to deliver you and he's going to forgive you, but you're going to have to come clean. Well, I did not know the FBI was already investigating him. I did not know he was in investigation for short sales, short, short, uh, short selling stocks with Lennar. Long and the short of it, our ministry paid to, uh, to uh, an attorney to get his wife out of, out of Dodge before when he was in prison. We got her out uh, and the whole long story of it is um, she was set free. She divorced this man. Uh, he's in prison as we speak. And I was a portion, a part of putting this man in prison and exposing what he was doing. So I do have a little bit of authority writing this book uh, and dealing with the white house, the courthouse and the church house. And no, I'm not here to expose leaders. I'm here to get them all set free. Right. I want them free, but there's a, it's time. It, God's going to expose them so they can either come to this ministry and get the help they need and repent or God's going to expose them all publicly. So this book details a lot of my experiences from, uh, you know, assistants that worked with me, teams I raised up, people I worked with, preachers and pastors in, in different parts of the, the world uh, that turned against me. And I learned a lot from it. And now I'm going to help our listeners with that. So that's well, why I wrote the book. Sorry. Um, I, I love what you said um, at the beginning of that. Also that he... He had gone to prison, found yes. Jesus, got out of prison, started this fraud business, became a pastor too, but went back into crime. And the reason is he didn't get delivered and healed. And that yes. is um, that is one of the uh, most important things from your book is, yes, God can forgive you and Jesus forgives you when you ask, if you ask. Yes. But then you have to get healed of those wounds. You have to get healed of those wounds and why you were committing those sins in the first place. You have to let God heal you of those or you'll just go back into it. Like the dog going back into its vomit kind of uh, yes. scripture, you know. Um, so this book will definitely help you with that and help you see some of the generational things that happened. Um, there's a chapter in here about death. Go ahead. I hear a lot of people say PTSD, and, and I mentioned this to somebody recently, uh, a doctor, and he said to me, oh, that's wonderful because there are soldiers really suffer from PTSD. And I said, you know what? It's not just our, our, our soldiers, doctor. I said, it's post-traumatic stress disorder. I said, the religion, religion and life is in Christians. So I said, this is across the board. So that's what I deal with is the PTSD, the addiction, uh, social media, which I want to also write a full book on social media for dummies. 
um, because it is a church. <laughs> it is a mega church. And yeah. there has to be protocol on social media. If you're a Christian and if you're doing Facebook lives and preaching and teaching, uh, there's protocol. So that'll be, um, that's on my agenda as well. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, that yeah. sounds good. Um, what do you want readers to take away from this book? Awesome question is that you too can hear from the Lord. You don't have to be a prophet. You right. don't have to be a seer to hear in the heavenly places. Now, did I say everybody can be a prophet? No, the book is the, the, the book. The Bible is very clear that some are given to be prophets. Some. So it's an office that we actually hold and that, that God commissions and that someone in the natural ordains and, uh, and mentors and there's accountability. Um, but what, to sum that question up would be this. What I've heard a lot of believers say is, I, I don't have those um, third heaven experiences. I, I, I don't walk in that. I, I, don't, I don't hear from God that way. My book actually teaches the opposite, that you can experience God in the natural and that will take you into the supernatural. So you don't have to have a supernatural experience to relate in the natural. So all of the experiences that I have had in the natural, I've sought the Lord on all of us. And that's not everything. I mean, I've had supernatural experiences without a natural, but what I want to teach is that what's happening to you in the natural, seek the Lord and ask him, what is the twin in the supernatural? The natural and the supernatural are, there are always twins. They're identical twins. They are. So where's your twin in the supernatural for what's happening to you now? You can read this book and take away from it. I can actually have a supernatural experience. I can have a vision. I can have a trance. I can have a dream. These are all in the Bible. And so I want to teach them once they've read my book and we're hearing many reviews um, of our readers are listening are reading this book and saying, I immediately had a prophetic dream that night. It's, well, of course it's, it's, it's a prophetic impartation. Yeah, I didn't have to lay hands on you. you re you're reading the book. Right. And so the Lord is taking you into a supernatural experience. So that's what I want our readers to hear. Don't think that you have to be a prophet to hear from God. You too can have a supernatural experience and it may just be triggered from your natural experience first. I love that. And that's a new thought for me too. Um, I had never made that connection before you had um, said it a few months ago to me. Um, with the look at the nat what's happening in the natural and that's connected to the spiritual, the spiritual. Yes. so um, that's a lot to uh, chew on for everyone um, yes. well I'd like you to pray for everyone if you can can you do that absolutely, absolutely. or would you I know you can but would you <laughs> <laughs> oh um, you know prayer is this conversation with the Lord right exactly and mm -hmm. we know now um, that this uh, this interview, not only our listeners right now, but it's just going to go through the span of time. So when you, I like to teach and I do this in my conferences when the prophetic's moving and when the Holy Spirit's moving, I actually stop on the microphone and say, let me just explain what just happened to Sherry. Why is that happening to her? And so I begin to explain and teach in the midst of it. And I think we've become so hyper spiritual that we just can't stop and give instruction. And so I want our listeners to understand right now, as we pray, you may receive, you may hear something think, Oh, well that interview was, um, uh, what are we at? August, uh, today's August. What, uh, I would know the date. Um, 21st. Yes. Today's August 21st, 2019. However, I'm just watching this video in 2020 on August 19. That, that word can't be for me. I'm going to tell you right now, whatever's being spoken in the atmosphere right now is for you. And you need to grab the word for yourself and claim it for yourself if it, if it ministers your spirit. So in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Holy Spirit, for this time. We take authority over the airwaves first because you don't walk into a place and just think that you can just walk in and everything's safe. You take authority over every dimension of that home, that movie theater, that store, that beauty salon, that mall. In the name of Jesus, when you walk in, you say, 
I take authority over every plan and purpose of the enemy and every strategy that's been devised in demonic places and, and in the atmosphere. We disarm the enemy now and we thwart your plans because I raise my shield of faith and that faith extinguishes every fiery dart that would come at me or that would come against anybody watching this uh, this broadcast or anybody walking into the mall today or walking into that marathon that's going to enter that race or set and such so that's what we pray right now that every demonic force is bound so now that we've taken authority and we've closed every port of the devil and we've closed every door by our faith and me and sherry and all of those listening agreement now i'm going to pray for you because the atmosphere is safe and our no terrorist no terrorist foreign or domestic can come in so now i speak to every listener and i say be at peace i say take a deep breath in the holy ghost right now and say peace be still whatever trauma has come your way Whatever disagreements and unequally yoked situations you're in, I say that the Lord is bigger than that. And in Jesus' mighty name, surrender that situation. Surrender your spouse that is not equally yoked with you. Sometimes it's a daily surrender. Sometimes it's an hourly surrender. Sometimes it's just saying, I surrender the situation to you, Lord. Make me aware when it's about to rise up again and I need to pray over it again. It's really that simple. There's no hyper spirituality to this thing. We just come to the Father and we say, take my husband, take his heart, take his mind, take his soul, take his spirit, take his temple. And I surrender it to you and I lay it, to, lay it at the throne of grace because destiny is bigger than the devil. Destiny belongs to those who pray. So I say those who are in agreement right now, every unequally yoked situation, every addiction that has you bound, Every pill that you've been taking for years and years and years that you feel you'll never be able to get off of, every friendship, every job, every child, everything about your life, I surrender it to the Lord, the Lord your God. Because the Bible says, besides him, is there any other God besides this rock? No, there is no other God. So every God, that means anything that you put above in your life before above and, and, and in the midst of the Lord Jesus Christ is an idol. So we submit every idol to you because humility is literally the, the, the portal in which God's grace and his power travels. So we humble ourselves in the sight of the Lord that he might lift us up because your destiny is just that big. I'm calling on all the superheroes now. I'm calling on all the warriors now. You are a mighty, mighty woman of God. You are a wonder woman in Christ. You are Superman in Christ. You can break every kryptonite of spirit, everything that's draining your strength, everything that's draining your destiny, everything that's draining who you are in Christ. We break it now in Jesus' mighty name. And we take the rock of Jesus Christ and we lift it up because upon this rock, he said he'll build his church. You are his church. And I thank you, Father, there's anointing and a breaker's anointing as Wendy Alec, who is the forward, wrote the forward, my dear sister in the Lord, that wrote the forward on this book. We declared and decreed the breaker anointing. So remember, the spirit of the breaker is upon this book. What needs broken in your life right now? Your heart's broken. It's already broken. Thank you, Jesus. Let it break more now in Jesus' name. But I can't. If I give it to them, I won't be able to think anymore. I won't, I won't start, stop crying. Someone's got a severely broken heart and you are afraid to surrender it because it's already broken. So you're protecting that which you have left. But I hear the father say, give me your leftovers. Naked you came, naked you're going to return. Give it to me now. Give it to me. And I will restore to you a new heart, just as I told my prophet Ezekiel. I give you a new heart, but I can't give you back what you don't hand me. Give it to them, your broken relationships. Give them your children. Give them the schools. Give them your nation. Not like God say, give me the nations and I'll give you an inheritance. Give them everything you've got. And I promise you, you will not leave 
the throne empty handed. You will not leave this broadcast empty handed. Just give it up. What do you have to lose? Your mind? Don't you feel like you've already lost it? What, your ministry? Don't you feel like you've already lost it? Your health? Don't you feel like you've already lost it? Your plans and your purposes and your dreams and your promises? Don't you feel you've already lost it? Give it up. Give in, but just never give up. Give everything in, but don't give up. Even if you have just one ounce of strength left, one breath left, you're still alive. You can fight through this thing, and you're not alone. Find your tribe. God's bringing your tribe to you, and you'll never have to do this alone. So I break every demonic spirit that's tried to hold you down, every religious spirit, every antichrist spirit, Leviathan spirit, and physical spirit in the name of Jesus, because your breath is now never, this is not going to be your last breath. You're going to be given more breath than you've ever had. You're, the wind in your sails is going to take you across the nations further than you've ever gone. So we're calling forth the breath of, of Zoe, breath of God, from the north, the south, and the east, and the west to take you across the uncharted waters. Some of you are about to go in an uncharted place. You don't even know how you're going to get there. But do know that the Lord your God's already charted that path for you. All he wants is your will. He doesn't need your resources. And you don't need his. You want his will. Because when you have his will, You'll have his resources. Don't, don't, get it, don't get it shaken up. Don't get it turned around. Pray for his will. Pray for his face. Because the hands and the resource always come along with that. But he knows what you're looking for. So we surrender that over in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um... So for the last few minutes, um, you are doing a new thing in Franklin, Tennessee. And so, the, so if anyone is in the Franklin uh, or Nashville area, you need to listen to what this woman and her husband are doing. So tell us about what you're doing now in Franklin. Thank you. So Truth and Love Ministry International is our nonprofit prophetic ministry that umbrellas many, many things that we're going to be doing. One of them is, as you said, the word and the workout, a vision I had back in 2002, which was called Praise Aerobics. So yeah, I'm definitely aging myself right now. Uh, we know that um, the the vision never changes, but the, excuse me, the mission never changes, but the vision does. God will always merge visions together. So the vision that we have is to bring the church and the gym together as one. So I've been in the fitness industry since I was 16 years old. Um, worked with the top bodybuilders in the in the world and and all kinds of things. I ended up meeting uh, Brian, Mr. Unbreakable Warren, uh, who's an MMA champion. Uh, so God uh, merged me with him five years ago. Just a year prior is when I incorporated the uh, praise ropes to become the word in the workout. So just as I received my legal documents um, from my lawyer at the time, I met Brian. And uh, so if you've been waiting on your vision, it's okay, just keep waiting because quava, right? Psalm 27 says, just wait upon the Lord. And it, it means to hopeful expectation. So be hopeful because we are now, how many years later, it was like over 15, 16 years ago um, that I was teaching these classes out of churches. Now my husband and I are launching here in Franklin at LPG Sports Academy uh, in Franklin, Tennessee. It's uh, You can go to our website, thewordintheworkout.org, for all the information. But what we're doing is we are launching fitness classes. Oh, we're working out. No, no, no. Has anybody ever been prophesied to while they were training? Have you ever done a bicep curl and had somebody come up and lay hands on you and prophesy over you while you're working out? It's a new concept. But I've been doing it because what I say at this video, uh, this uh, this interview, uh, I've, I've taken Jesus everywhere. I've asked him, why is this happening? Why is that happening? What are you trying to show me? And in that, I began to see clients that I was training. And I began to see Sherry clients holding their breath. And all of a sudden, I began seeing pictures of her and the Holy Spirit. Tell them. Tell them. They're internal processors. Tell them they hold their breath. Tell them if they keep holding their breath, they're going to have anxiety. Tell them if they have anxiety, they're going to end up on benzoids. Tell them how to breathe through the strength. Tell them how to breathe through the process. Tell them how to breathe out, exhale out on exertion. Uh, breathe in on, you know, on the, on the inhale, on the positive, exhale on the negative. And I begin to prophesy. And people begin to go, oh my gosh, that's the Lord. And then the last 15 minutes of the workout was worship. And I laid hands and they began to weep. Oh, they began to weep while they were stretching, weep while they were getting their flexibility. Are we prophesying right now? This was church. So people that would not go to church came to my workouts. People that came to my workouts began to go to church. 
So we're reaching them a different way. And no, it's not funky. Don't look at all this funky stuff you see on TV and all. everything's done decently in the order because the Holy Spirit's an orderly God. He's orderly, right? So we uh, are launching, uh, as they'll go to the website, uh, the classes will have different times we're doing them. And then the desire is to actually start church services on Sunday mornings. So there's a lot we're doing and they can just kind of keep up with our calendar events and, and uh, 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 definitely book us for their events. We do conference speaking from the book tour to the workouts, boot camps, um, all of it. So, yeah. We're, we're stepping out in Franklin, Tennessee. Well, let me ask you this about your classes. Um, who are these classes good for? Good question. Uh, I guess I would, it'd be a rhetorical question. Uh, what, who's church good for? Okay. So we reach everybody. Every age group, um, everybody comes, every religious groups come. You know, I had Serena Williams in my classes uh, back in the day. Um, I've had Muslims, non you know, people that aren't, aren't, don't share our faith, uh, and they come and, uh, literally they come in there, you know, all wrapped up and working out, sweating and full garb. So the, the classes are good for anybody that wants to work themselves out physically, emotionally, and spiritually. And we work with all different, uh, fitness levels. So it's just like church, right? You have some that have never been to church. So I can't pray in tongues. I can't sing a new song. I can't, I have to stay seeker sensitive. No, you speak to your group in order and with the wisdom of the Holy spirit. And that's the same thing we do with our, our classes. So we have men, women, husbands, wives, uh, right now are the children we're working at with are 15 and older okay. until we can go to uh, different groups where we can have the little ones working out, which is what I did before. So yeah, anybody can come and we work you at your fitness level. All right. Somebody who's disabled, they could come. Oh, absolutely. Uh, the vision is to actually uh, do conference is this to do uh, boot camp conferences where right now you see the conference, right? Everybody's sitting in their chairs with the Bible and then the big keynote speaker on the platform. Well, no, no, no. We're going to have the conference floor filled with people, wheelchairs, GI Janes, moms, dad, every fitness level. And on the platform will be my husband and I, and we have other key people that we're bringing into this with screens behind us. And we will do conferences like that, boot camps, everybody working out, everybody exercising. So we put hand weights in, para, in paraplegics arms. Uh, we train Zena. Uh, uh, she is uh, from, you can look up her on um, the, what was that show on, was it move that they did the house housing for people they for uh it was uh ty bennington ty ty yes and they would come in and do the house for them because they were disabled and um yes so we trained her well she's got no legs she only has arms so she came to our classes and we put hand weights in her hands and we taught her how to work out to everything that we were doing and uh so yeah, wheelchairs, everybody. <laughs> that is fantastic. Yes. I'm glad I asked you. I didn't know that you had done that already. I felt like you should, so that's why I well, asked we've you. Well, we've got a list of celebrities, um, yeah. you know, what people call celebrities. Uh, I just call people that just can't have a hard time trusting others to train them because they have to stay guarded. So we do a lot of training for celebrities, uh, a lot for, I trained Homeland Security for five years in Riverside, uh, which probably many people don't know that. So we really have a vast um, expertise in a lot of different areas. So don't just preach the gospel. We also do it through training, through fitness training. And really the church has been lopsided. We've been all about, well, the word is important, but it's been that and it's not been the other. And so I think God is trying to bring balance back to the church yes. for the first time in a very long time, probably centuries actually. So we've been out of balance for a very wow. long time, especially the American church. Wow. Okay. So let me um, just show your book again. It, here's the cover for those watching. Fantastic cover by Kristen Ingrid Bretson. How do you say her name? Yes, Ingrid Bretson. She did. Mm -hmm. um, this is actually, If do I have a moment to just a little bit on the cover? Yeah, go ahead. When we had lost everything, um, 
you, uh, you know, uh, those that I trained in my ministry, we, we got a certified letter. They took all their money from us, told us God will take care of us. Uh, they still think they're hearing from the Lord, but that's how they treated me. Uh, people that I ministered to who had no money left and uh, we're sitting in the house and we know it's time to get married. That's a beautiful story. And we're writing a book on that as well. And um, went to the mall, Sherry. And I thought I would just go into one of the little um, Mexican dress shops and because they have the cutest dresses. And I thought I'd make my fiance laugh by putting this fluffy dress on. Well, long and the short of it, everybody kind of went crazy with this dress. As you can see on the, the cover, it looks like a breastplate, the dress. And behind you? You look it was in behind me. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. And <laughs> so this, thank you. I, yeah. And so this uh, dress was on clearance for $199 on, uh, they were clearancing it out and it was my size and the only one left. Um, and Holy, Holy Spirit said, you need to get that dress. I said, what you talking about Jesus? Uh, we have no money and that's all that we have. Well, who knew that this would be the dress for our engagement. And Wendy Alec is the one that saw this, um, after her mantle had been taken. Uh, and that's another story. And another interview. <laughs> that's another interview. We will do that with her. Uh, and so we went ahead and filmed this. And I heard the Holy Spirit say, drop to the, drop to your knees and raise your sword, Deborah. And you see the look on my face. That's when the Holy Spirit said that to me. And my husband just happened to be standing behind me, just kind of watching me walk through the sand. Like what's she doing? Like he always does. Uh, camera up so they can see the see okay. him. There he is, Mr. Unbreakable Warren. Woo! I tell you, I can't, I, I'm who I am in this season of my life because he mm -hmm. is who he is to me. Mm -hmm. And um, so I just, I, that's his sword and his shield. Now that'll preach. Uh, yeah. I, I prophesy that the Lord is raising up Mordecai's and Esther's uh, in 2020. Uh, it will no longer just be the Esther's, just the Deborah's, right. uh, just the powerful women. God is restoring the men. And that's why you see the attack on, uh, on, you know, these men right now being told yes. So I just give props to my husband. He's just such a mighty man of God, but there's such a vision, behind, such a great deal. But yes, the, uh, so I gave this to, to Kristen and she is the one that did, um, what are their names? Uh, From Joanna and Chip Gaines, the, the Magnolia, one of the Magnolia books. The Magnolia story. He did their design yeah. and uh, so I had a awesome awesome um Harper and Collins uh final editor the Lord hooked me up with and remember we had no money I mean I, God just brought us the best he brought us you uh you uh did some final formatting in my book uh you offered to do it for free uh it, come on now and then she did the final cover it only took two tries and she had it and uh, so book one is the way of the warrior. The second one's going to deal with all medications. So I'll definitely get myself in trouble on the second book. Um, <laughs> if, if the first one hasn't already done that. So <laughs> that's okay. You're used to it. It's okay. I am. I am. <laughs> that's all right. Okay. So um, check out her book, the word in the workout prophetic insight into physical, emotional, or spiritual fitness, the way of the warrior uh, by Gina guy Warren and it's yeah. available on Amazon. Yeah. Right. And then um, to be to, to get information about the word and the workout classes, the launch of this new ministry in Franklin, Tennessee. So if you're in the Franklin or Nashville area, please go check them out. But go to the website for times and dates. And it is. Why don't you tell them the, uh, the website? It's the word and the workout dot org. And you can also book uh, myself or Pastor Brian or both of us for uh, conference speaking. You want to you want to move with the Holy Ghost? Yeah, we're available. So yeah. they can they can contact us on so the word in the workout.org merges with Truth and Love Ministry International. We merge that all on the website. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So guys, definitely um look the web, definitely get on the website, put in your email address so you can stay uh sign up for notifications about what's happening out there. Um and if you like this interview and you'd like more access to other interviews with Christian authors. Um, this is my second one and we will be, we meaning me, <laughs> we'll be doing more in the future. But if you want to get updates about that, you can go to my web website, which is sherrymcgriff.org. And that is S H A R I M C G R I F F as in Frank.org.
Okay, so thanks everybody, and until next time, love you. Thank Bye -bye. you, God bless you then. Thank you, Gina. Bye-bye.